Heal, the 2020 video game review. So yeah, this is yet another game that I absolutely loved. And the, let's see, yeah, I played it on PC via Steam. And yeah, so basically the, yeah, the game is of, you know, an elderly man going through his home, a park, other places, going over memories that mean a lot to him. The game does not give you very much context, which is either going to intrigue you or leave you just not caring about what's going on. And, you know, obviously the hope is that it intrigues you, you know, if, yeah, but for sure, what I just said, that's all you get. You you really don't have very much. And it's very purposeful. It's not that, you know, oh, I couldn't think of anything good. You know, the, the game was made by Jesse McConan. And for the rest of the review, I'm going to be calling him Jesse. Not because I know him personally, but because I'm pretty sure I just mispronounced his last name. You know, he also made both Distraint games, and all three of these he made entirely by himself, other than some translation work. This has way more variety to the puzzles than the first Distraint. I haven't played the second one yet. You know, that was practically my only criticism of the, the first Distraint. You know, in that game, basically, you have to solve puzzles by finding something for an inventory, then using it in the right place, and or finding the right place to click, maybe more than once, maybe several places like that. In this, in part because you're using the mouse to solve puzzles, but also, it seemed like, you know, Jesse looked at this strength and felt like it would be great if there was more variety to the puzzles in a game he made. You know, there's a level of interactivity with the mouse that reminds me more of, like, old-school puzzle point-and-click game stuff like The Curse of Monkey Island, not as streamlined as something like Rusty Lake Hotel. And considering that everything works about Distraint 1, I have a lot of respect for how this game goes in a completely different direction in almost all aspects. Like... Apparently, technically, Distraint 1 is considered point-and-click, even though you don't use the mouse, and, yeah, um, you know, but, yeah, so both of these are point-and-click, the camera's at the side, you know, that's essentially it, other than that, they're completely different, you know, the, the art style, the puzzles, the way stuff is communicated, you know, Distraint 1 has dozens, maybe over a hundred lines of dialogue that you read, this one has almost no text. In this, you don't use WASD, but the mouse. In Distraint, you play as a young man. This one has you play as an elderly man. And, yeah, they, they have extremely different art styles. Both really fit what that specific game is going for. That one is very stylized with this retro look, like pixel graphics kind of thing. Where this more resembles, not quite photorealistic, but certainly much closer to what the real world looks like. It feels slightly like someone's attempt at remembering what the world looks like. Feeling a little out of focus, not in an amateur, unprofessional way, but implying senses that are no longer quite as keen. And this is clear from the fact that the puzzles are completely in focus. Both of these games have very strong atmosphere, but Distraint is like Silent Hill. This is a bit like that part early in Pixar's Up, where it's reflecting on the things that the protagonist no longer has, all that he's lost. Honestly, if you didn't know that Jesse had made both of these games, you might not be able to guess, because they're so different. And I love that. I, I have such tremendous respect for artists who are willing to really push themselves. Honestly, if this game had just been distraint again, I would have been perfectly happy with that, and I know a lot of his fans would. But, yeah, he really... Yeah, it's it's amazing. So, in distraint, the puzzles are yet another element that conveyed the message and the the horror. You know, in, in that game, you spent a lot of the game, spent a lot of time trying to see seize other people's property and repeatedly you don't, you don't encounter the person that you're seizing the property of they'll express strong negative emotions depress maybe depression at the prospect of losing the property 
you know, some will ask for a quid pro quo, others will outright say, I need you to do this for me because I simply can't because of the situation that you've put me in. And as you do things for them, it's inescapable how bad their situation already is. What you're taking away from them wasn't much, but it was all they had. And in this game, you know, similarly, the puzzles convey themes and messages that the game is also conveying in all other are the other areas. You know, again, there's so many video games out there where there's not enough of a connection between what the game is going for with, like, you know, yeah, what is it trying to convey, and then, you know, yeah, stuff like puzzles. So, really appreciate this. The music uses piano notes to great effect, creating a very haunting score. And without spoiling what it is, yes, if you reach the very end of the game, you will find out, you know, what, what has been going on. What is it that, you know, what is the actual situation that the yeah and i thought it made perfect sense i it got me right in the feels fantastic job and i think that might be more or less but yeah um tremendous variety to to the puzzles like i suppose one thing is that there's a lot of you know you're always using the mouse a lot of them you have to manipulate there's basically you are yeah a lot of puzzles basically you know you you click on a thing and the the entire screen is taken up by something you know it could be a telephone you know um, I don't, yeah, you know, and you basically, you have to, to click on something, maybe hold down the mouse, move stuff around, or, you know, affect stuff, and, you know, sometimes there'll be a, a hint nearby, you know, sometimes, I've, I've seen some say that they didn't feel like there was quite enough for for some puzzles and they felt other puzzles there was just too much you know it, they felt like it you they were basically told the solution and i i can see what they mean uh didn't bother me too much personally but but yeah um the the puzzles tend to be very it's kind of difficult to just try to brute force right and um just like with Distraint 1, there is one puzzle that really frustrates, you know, me and others. I've seen others comment on it as well. And, yeah, you know, it's there's so many puzzles. There's, if I had to guess, maybe three dozen puzzles over the course of the... Two or three dozen, I would say, over the course of this. Yeah, the... the I... I'm not sure how you would, maybe it's a dozen and a half, whatever, not important. I I don't think it's, it's, you know, the fact that there's really only the one puzzle that's like, ugh, that's very impressive con considering. But yeah, um, I, I'm not, I wouldn't quite go as far as to say, oh, you know, no two puzzles at all feel the same. But I was never, I never, like, looked at a puzzle and was like, this again, you know, there's, there, yeah, there's tremendous variety to it. And I think that might be what I have to say. So, yeah. Uh, I did not run into any bugs or glitches, right? I did see, I've, I haven't been trying for it myself, but apparently, so there's this, you know, among the, among the game's achievements, there is this one that, it's essentially like a, a speed run kind of thing, 
and there's this aspect to it. Let's see the um, yeah. The thing with the speed run is that the the um, some of the stuff that you can't skip in this game takes up some of the time which you know yeah that's that it's frustrating to have to to wait through that and feel like you're not you know it, it kind of kills the momentum of a of a speed run i don't really speed run so i haven't tried it myself but i can 100% understand why it was frustrating for for people and Let's see, so the, but yeah, uh, personally I spent about an hour and five minutes on it and got 10 out of 14 achievements and was quite happy with that. And yeah, uh, I rate this an 8 out of 10 and yeah, I do own Distraint 2. I'm definitely looking forward to that one and yeah. Catch you in a week with another video game review. Not that it's going to be distraint too, but some game. <laughs>